Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to give you an update on the bullet journal method that I started back in the end of April. And I know that I haven't given an update on this in probably three weeks, but I wanted to kind of show you what I added to my bullet journal and how I'm hopefully, um, how it's helping me have, you know, memories. So if you haven't seen the setup of this bullet journal, journal, go ahead and watch the first video that I did. I'm going to put these in a series of a playlist, so it should be easy for you to find them. Um, so I still have my future log, my May at a glance, still don't know what to do with that. That was May. This is what I wanted to do, and this is what we did. So I went through and wrote down everything that I needed to do for the day, crossed it off when I did it, or moved it forward for the next day. And actually, when I realized that I needed a daily insert in my life, it helped me with my productivity. Instead of looking at my weekly, what I needed to do for the week, it actually helps me to even break those weekly tasks down into daily tasks. So I've really, um, I've really had a, a pretty good time using this. I added some weather in there just so that I could have some colors and I also added some like I do a little quotes but what I really added from the last time that I updated this was that I added um photos and I did like a weekly spread so I started this one in the beginning of June and there's no faces shown on this that I don't want to share so this is like and I realized that I spelled that word wrong. I was working so hard and trying to get my lettering good that I spelled it wrong. This is supposed to be a remember. So this is my daughter on her first job. And um, that only lasted a day because she ended up couldn't working in there because she had gotten sick. And it, it didn't work out in the heat, in the extreme heat temperatures. But anyways, we got a picture and so that will be a memory for me. And I just kind of hand lettered what we did. I decorated for this baby shower. I made a lot of baby decor this month um, on my Cricut machine. And so I took some photos and decorated. Now the photos are really small just because I wanted them to fit inside of my boxes. So I have backup photos on my phone and I can always reprint these photos out for my... I have a photo album that I keep that I do like scrapbooking in. And I definitely print those photos on photo paper. And I print them with, I have the selfie, the Canon selfie. I love that thing. And it prints really high quality photos. So this is just an update on what we did. My More of my daily going through. And for space that had ended, I ended made sure that I ended it on a Sunday. And if I had space, I didn't want to put the Monday in there because I wanted to give um, another weekly spread. So this is kind of what had happened. I don't even think I did any videos this week. I think that this week was just a really hard week for me. Um, like I remember my dog, she acted completely out of character. Now she's 14 years old, so I'm expecting that there's probably a neurological decline in her and, um, in our animals, um, in our first dog that we've had, um, she ended up passing away from a brain tumor, cancer. So we saw changes in her. We saw like when dogs get older, they change. And so we expected that that might happen to our other dog, not that she has brain cancer, but that as they get old, they do change. And sometimes they act out of character and it's okay for them to do that. Um, she, you know, if she's not in any pain or anything like that, we take care of that. We, if she was, you know, we always have taken care of that. And when our dog had seizures, we would give her medications to stop the seizures and stuff like that. But anyways, I wanted to um, add these photos and like this, because this is more of a memory for me. So I'm combining this bullet journal as a to-do list, a monthly tracker, and a memory keeper. So that's why I added the weeks and put some photos in and hand lettered kind of what happened. 
So if like I had a full page, but yet again, I ended this on a Sunday, I, you know, cause I have to do an open spread. Actually, I missed that for some reason. I have to do an open spread on two pages. So I went ahead and simply hand lettered a quote that I found on Pinterest or something. And I completely skipped those. And then this is, this was this past week, or actually this was last week. But this was just, I changed a little bit of the sun. I made it kind of more bold because it's really, really hot. And I love the weather. I absolutely love this weather. So this is what, now I covered that up. I have a photo of my granddaughter under there. She is a very, very small little baby. And um, she's not born yet, but she is measuring really small for her age. Um, so they're gonna monitor that. And I highlighted my hair, so I put that in there. I did it on my own. Um, I watched a lot of videos on how to highlight your hair. And I used to get my hair done professionally, but the cost has just become kind of outrageous. So I can't afford that anymore. So I just try to do it myself and I actually think it turned out pretty good. I don't have to tone my hair because I was born a natural toe head, but as I've aged, it's gotten darker and I can highlight it back to basically platinum without having to add a toner. So I'm happy that I can still do that, you know, and do that on my own. But I'm going to tell you a little story about this little guy. I don't know if you can see him. He's a little baby bird. And we found him on the 15th. So what happened was we now live in an apartment and um, there was, they wanted the dryer vents cleaned out and there happened to be a, a nest up in the dryer vents and the people, it just made me, it made me angry. They took the nest out and they threw it on the ground. And there was four living baby birds and these were nestlings these were not birds that were on the ground that the parents were watching these were newborn baby birds so um the three of them were were passed away and this one was alive we kept it there for about 10 hours and watched and watched and waited and no help came to this baby bird i was like please uh i don't know what to do with this baby bird I couldn't sit there and watch it die. So we took it in and I immediately put it, because we have an air conditioned unit, I immediately put it on a warm, um, that was like a hot pad underneath, like, um, and I put a towel over it to kind of keep the moisture and the humidity right. I didn't even know what kind of baby bird this was. So I contacted the state and local like rehab places. And of course nobody was open because it was nighttime. And so the, my goal was to keep this baby alive, to keep him fed on a formula that I was able to make with a, it was a high protein formula that I was able to make for this little bird. And we kept the bird alive overnight. And in the morning, I was shocked that it was still alive on this Thursday. And, um, so I ended up breaking down crying because I felt like I was so overwhelmed trying to take care of this precious little bird and he started to have like runny stool and I thought he was dying but as the lady at the rehab center told me um it's okay it was just probably his diet and I have the perfect formula for him so I called this rehab center after emailing the other ones in the night and them saying, well, it depends on what kind of bird it is because we won't take in every kind of bird. And I thought, well, what do I do? You know? So I called this lady, this lady, she has her own wildlife rehab. She takes in every single animal. And I was crying at this point. And she said, um, here's my address, bring him in and I will take him. And there was no questions about what breed is, or, you know, what breed of the bird is he? I didn't even know. Um, there was no questions about, well, send me photos first. Well, do this first, do this first. She said, bring him in. I got in my car with my girls. We drove um, for 
almost an hour and dropped him off and she fed him right away, which he took to it. He's a strong little guy and she thinks he's going to do fine. So he's a little baby starling. If you can see in that photo, he was, it looks like he's like smiling, but it's a little baby starling. And according to many states, I guess they're an invasive species and not everybody will take him. And she said, well, it's not his fault that he was born. It's not his fault that, you know, he's, he has, he's an orphan. It's not his fault. So we're going to do everything we can to keep him alive. And we're going to, um, she has 50, 50 acres. And so she just rehabilitates all the animals onto her property and sends them out in the wild when they're ready. So I'm going to donate $50 for her to help her cause because, um, like I said, I think she had like baby raccoons. She had baby bobcats. She had baby deer. She takes in every animal, even if the animal is on death's door. I know it sounds horrible, but she was talking to, I mean, I was crying and I said, I am so sorry. I don't even know why I'm crying. It's a little bird. I shouldn't be so distraught over it. And she said, no, I get it. Um, she said, it's really hard when I get the fawns in because these baby fawns come in and sometimes she said like she's taken in 43 this year and sadly has had to euthanize 24 just because their injuries were just too bad and she doesn't turn anyone away she just uses her supplies and her medications to help these animals so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna donate $50 to help this little to help this her specifically not the state but her specifically she just has worked for the past decade doing this. So anyways, on from the baby bird. If you know anything about me and my family, we we take in orphaned animals that we can, like we've had a couple of dogs and cats that have come that have been injured that have been nobodies and they weren't chipped or anything. And so after a week of no one letting us know, after we've posted their photos and everything on social media, we have fixed them up, um, like had them fixed or neutered and um, kept them. So that's us. <laughs> but I got a henna tattoo and I did pool therapy and then me and my husband went to a festival and then there was Father's Day. But and then that was up to today. So this is basically how I've done my bro bull ugh, I can't even say it bullet journal. So this is an update on it. And um, hopefully I can fill this thing out by the end of the year. I don't particularly like the size, but I just wanted to do this size for it to be easier to be seen on a video. And I hope that you liked that little flip through on my bullet journal. And thank you for watching. Have a good day.